Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awe, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, we are presented with a blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. We are continuing with our series on how strong families are built. God's idea is for us to strengthen the family. So let's get into the word and I'll show you how to do that. They asked him, what's the secret of your family? You've coped with all the pressure. You've stayed married. You have four children. And, and you do all these things. And he said this, Gene and I have two conditional commitments. We are unconditionally committed to Christ as Lord. And we are unconditionally committed to each other. First, we are unconditionally committed to Christ as Lord. And we are unconditionally committed to each other. They made the decision no one else and when you are committed it means there are no alternatives when you are committed to a diet even if they bring you cheesecake you won't have it because you've made up your mind the door is closed to alternatives and you are committed to that marriage unconditionally uh, the great uh, luciano pavarotti the singer he grew up in a home where the father was a baker but his dad gave him good advice, even though he was a simple baker. His dad said to him, I want you to go and take singing lessons because uh, you, you've got a good voice. So he went and he enjoyed it. But later in his life, as he was growing up, he wanted to uh, go to uh, teacher's training college. So he went and he graduated. And then he, he said to his dad, should I sing? Should I teach? His dad said, I don't know. But one thing I know, my boy, if you try and sit on two chairs, it doesn't work. You fall through the middle. So choose one chair. And he chose one. He chose one chair and he became a famous singer. It took him about seven years before he made his first big appearance, but he chose one chair. There's a principle in that. In life, choose one partner, choose one family, choose a church. Don't keep trying to sit and straddle two horses and sit on two chairs. Just make a decision. And people say, but, but I married the wrong person. Gary Thomas in the book called Sacred Marriage said this, we must refrain from asking the spiritually dangerous question. Did I marry the right person? A far better alternative than questioning one's choice is to learn how to live with one's choice. Can I just say to you, if you think you married the wrong person, we don't feel any sympathy for you because you made the choice. God never chooses for us. You must remember that. He presents and then we choose. Unless you are in a marriage where they made you do it. You made the choice. And we all change. Everyone changes as they get older. It's like when you buy a car. Some people's car contract lasts longer than their marriages. Some people get divorced before the car is paid. But you made the choice. You can't take that car back and say, I don't like it. It's been six months now and, and I don't like the way it drives. In this book, Gary Thomas talks about a woman called uh, Ann Tyler. She wrote a book called A Patchwork Planet. In this book, she tells the story about a 32-year-old 30, man who went through, uh, went through a, a terrible divorce. It messed up his life and he had regrets. But he had, a he had a discovery, he had a discovery as he went to work in an old people's home. He noticed older couples there still married after many, 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 many years. And, and as he went with these people, it dawned on him. 
and he had like a revelation about his own life. And Gary Thomas recounts the story from this novel. And speaking about this young man, he says he came to a profound understanding about his own marriage. And he said this, I was beginning to suspect that it made no difference whether they had married the right person. Finally, you are just with who you are with. You've signed on with her, putting in half a century with her, growing to know as well as you know yourself or even better. And she's become the right person or the only person might be, might be more to the point. I wish someone had told me that early. I wish someone had told me that early. I would have hung in there. I swear I would. I would never have driven Natalie to leave me. Don't wait until you get to a place where your marriage is broken and you realize there's only, uh, there's only one way to make this thing work. Make an unconditional commitment. Push out all the alternatives and forge ahead and you strengthen your family immediately. The next point is appreciation and affection. Appreciation and affection. There needs to be compliments paid, kind words spoken. Does your family know that you appreciate them? Or do you only moan at them? You are late again. Why didn't you do that? When are you going to do that? You, you, you always do this and you never do that. We need to show appreciation. There also needs to be affection. Do you touch your partner? The touch makes a difference. We, we must touch and show affection. Otherwise, what happens is your partner, even your children, will be susceptible to looking for it outside or elsewhere. That's why young girls that get no affection at home, their mothers say, have you had your bath? You stink. Look at your bra. Look at your top and, 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 and your, your hair. Do something with it. Then she meets a 16 year old boy whose hormones are raging. And he tells her, you are beautiful. And, and he kisses her on the neck. The, 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 the cheek and the lips and, and she's like Ooh. teenage pregnancy no affection no appreciation if you don't get it at home you look for it outside people who get good food at home don't want to eat outside show appreciation pay compliment and and respect the uniqueness in people don't be criticizing her all the time stop it do not be criticizing all the time listen to what charles swindle the pastor said charles swindle the pastor he says cultivate your own capabilities your own style appreciate the members of your family for who they are even though their outlook or style Maybe uh, may, may, uh, even though their outlook or style may be miles uh, different from yours, rabbits don't fly, eagles don't swim, ducks look funny trying to climb, squirrels don't uh, have any feathers. Stop comparing. There's plenty of room in the forest, and and we need compliment. We need to hug each other. We need to show affection. Speak people up. Build them up. They won't search for it outside the home. They won't search for it in drugs. They won't search for it in alcohol. They won't search for it in illicit sex. The list goes on. The next one is positive communication. The members of strong families know how to communicate and connect with each other. And they spend a lot of time talking and they know how to build each other up positively. Instead of sulking and, and screaming, they positively communicate. A man went to his friend one day and said to his friend, you need to help me. His friend said, what's the problem? And he said, 
It's my wife. He said, tell me about it. He said, she hasn't spoken to me for three weeks. What shall I do? His friend looked at him and said, I think she's trying to tell you something. How many of you know you shouldn't uh, speak through non-communication? You shouldn't speak through non-communication. You should speak and share, but it should be positive. You, you, should, you should broach your issues. But strong families don't just complain. They don't just moan and, and sulk. They bring it out. They have critical conversations. And we need to spend time doing that. Positive communication. Take time. Focus on the family. Uh, did a survey. And they found out that working women said they talk to their husbands an average 12 minutes a day. The Family Life Today magazine did a survey and they found out that married couples spend 27 and a half minutes a week talking to each other. That's less than two minutes. Uh, that's less than 12 minutes. That's less than 12 minutes a day. But this is what they also uh, found. That married couples spend 46 hours a week watching TV. What happens is we get overloaded with responsibility. Then by the time we get home, We've got nothing left to give. So we switch on the flat screen and, and we zone out. Instead of having positive communication, we've given all the customers and all the clients the positive communication. We need to come home and build. And strong families have positive communication. When last did you speak positively to your partner? When last did you build them up and encourage them? Relationship author Norman Wright has written wonderful books and understands relationships and has helped people. He gives 10 tips for family communication. 10 tips for family communication. And I want to give them to you. Number one, be a ready listener and don't answer until the other person has finished talking. Don't talk over each other. Let the person finish talking before you speak secondly be slow to speak be slow to speak think first then he says don't be hasty in your words he says speak truth and do it in love the bible tells us to speak the truth but we must speak the truth in love don't just go about speaking truth do it in love the next point don't exaggerate next point don't use silence to frustrate your family because some people do that next one explain why you are hesitant to talk at this time next point do not quarrel it is possible to disagree without quarreling next one don't respond in anger use a soft and kinder response as obviously the bible teaches that's what the bible says our words must be i mean uh, seasoned with grace and uh, full of salt and seasoned with grace what comes out of our mouth must build people up not destroy people not tear them down they, they must be kind words he, he goes on to say when you are in the wrong admit it and ask your mate for forgiveness next point avoid nagging this doesn't only apply to women it applies to men too Next point, do not blame or criticize the other person, but restore and encourage them and edify them. Next one, try to understand the other person's opinion and make allowance for differences. Positive communication is a building block for strong families. The next one is time together. They say that if you ask a child how to spell the word love, they will spell it time. Children need time. And what a lot of parents do is they don't spend time with their children. You hear some parents say this, I don't spend a lot of time with my children, but I spend quality time with them. So in other words, you are never around. But when you are at home for that brief period, you give them all your attention. Actually, that's unnatural. 
Your child needs to see you doing all sorts of things. Time together is not time together holding hands. You are all sitting down and the TV is off. Please don't get weird ideas. Time together is when you are all in the house together doing stuff. They, they hear you on the phone. They, they watch you on the laptop. They hear you talking to your spouse. They hear you talking to other people. They are with you when you go shopping. You teach them things. They are in the trolley. You push them along. They, they learn as they spend time with you. They watch how you interact with other people, how you interact with friends, how you, you interact with relatives, how you interact with your neighbors. We think time together is sitting with them, drawing with crayons. I don't know whether we still do that these days. No, they need to be with you because you model life for them. We spoke about affection under a different category. This, this is just time uh, learning how to be a human being, learning how to live your life. And it builds cohesion. It builds cohesion and it builds bonds. They surveyed uh, 1,200 uh, teens, the US Today magazine, and they found 76% 76, 76%, 76 of them said they would like to spend more time with their families. It's what they need. They just want to be with family. 25% of them said they've never had a meaningful conversation with their father because they just probably went around. That's just people being interviewed. Josh McDowell interviewed Christian families. He wrote a book called The Dad Difference and he interviewed Christians and he found it was exactly the same. He found that the average Christian, the average Christian teenager in our churches spend less than two minutes a day in meaningful conversation with their father. 25%, exactly the same as the other, said they've never had a meaningful conversation with their dads. We need to make a difference. We need to spend time together. We need to build the lives of, 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 of children. They did a survey and found that in talking to children about their challenges that they face, they, they, they spoke about peer pressure, schoolwork, etc. They found one of the big issues that children are experiencing in today's, today's world is a thing called aloneness. Aloneness. They are feeling abandoned. And strong families know how to spend time together and build bonds. It's a sad thing that we wait until we get old and then we wake up. 81% of retired people say, I'm so glad I retired. Now I can spend more time with my family. Why didn't you spend that time with them before you retired? You, you were so busy working. It's it's interesting. We spend all our time working. We don't we, we, we don't spend time with our family. Actually, our family uh or your family, your family, actually, your family needs you more than it needs the money. Your family needs you more than it needs the money. Frank Sinatra's daughter wrote a book about her life with her famous uh singer father. He sang until he was 81 years old. He did a circuit in Las Vegas. His health was deteriorating. Sometimes he couldn't even finish singing. They take him to a back room and give him oxygen. And she said, Dad, you need to stop. And he said, I can't. I need to provide for my family. I need to make money so the family will be okay. She said when he sang sometimes, he forgot the words and, and they would use a teleprompter. Sometimes he couldn't even read the teleprompter. He was so old and the audience would finish the song for him. And she begged him to stop singing. She, she said, she told him, you remember you told me a boxer needs to know when to step out of the ring, dad, it's time. He said, no, 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 no. I've got to make more money. Eventually he died and his family 
spent all their time arguing and fighting over his money. It would have been better. It would have been better if uh, they had him instead of his money. Don't wait until you get too old. Spend time with your family. It's a building block of stronger families. The next one is a commitment to honor God in everything. Strong families put God first. They honor him. They honor him in all their decisions. Their, their, their values are built around the word of God. The word of God is the ground rule for their behavior and all their decisions. They pray, they give, they serve, they tithe. They put God first in everything and they see God bless their lives. Look at what Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 says. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. In everything you do, Put God first, and He will direct you and crown your efforts with success. The principle is put God first, and the promise is He will crown your efforts with success. So, when you put God first, your family gets strong and you experience the blessing. And Yahovah. The former director of FBI said something very, very profound. He said that there is no synthetic replacement for a decent home life. Our high crime rate, particularly among juveniles, is directly traceable to a breakdown in moral fiber, to the disintegration of home and family life. Religion and home life are supplementary. It strengthens the other. It is seldom that a solid and wholesome hope life can be found in the absence of religious inspiration. We don't just need to be together in our homes. That's not the answer to our nation. We need families who put God first in everything. Don't leave that building block out. You are living, you, you are living a hole in the wall of your family. Build that block in. The next point is an ability to cope with stress and crisis. Many families fall apart when they have stress or crisis. And we live in a world where you cannot escape stress or crisis. People face huge work pressures and stress. Huge school pressures, university pressures, peer pressures. We must learn how to cope with stress. And too many families are, are like the army. Some families are so intense. You go home and it's, don't do that. Put it here. When, when, when are you going to do this? Sit at the table. Don't put your elbows there. Sit straight. Sit up. No wonder the children want to, es uh, uh, the children want to escape. It's pressure. A home needs to be a place where you can come and let out all the stress after work or school. Just chill out. Tell a joke. Throw food at each other. I mean, dress up. Do crazy stuff. A home is a place where you, you, you should escape. Learn how to cope with stress. Don't, don't add to it at home. If, if you want to build a strong family, you need God. You need a son, Jesus, to be part of it. There's no other foundation on which we can build than that which is Christ. Jesus is the sure foundation on which we can build our families. The question I want to ask you today is, do you know him? Is he part of your life? Is he your friend? Have you given your life to him? If you haven't, I want to encourage you to do that. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to pray uh, a simple prayer with you. I'm going to give you the words, you are the heart to it. But I want you to do it sincerely from the depths of your heart. Say with me, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. Come into my life. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. 
and I confess your lordship over my life. Wash me of all my sins. You creature in you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, want to know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Welcome into God's family. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. And I'm celebrating with you right here for praying that simple prayer and opening up your life to Him. Hey, thank you so much for tuning to this broadcast and I look forward to coming your way next time. But before I sign up, I want you to always know that if you want a life that's going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Do it by God's will. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.